CataractCoach.com, the INA only soft cataract. The nucleus is soft, but there are still some challenges with this case. This is a complete cataract case shown start to finish of this young patient who's 30 years old. And there's our first incision here. Now, the patient was about a minus four myope in both eyes. And the patient's other eye, the left eye, we did LASIK for and gave her a nice, beautiful, plano outcome. She's very happy. But this eye, when we examined her, we noted all these lens opacities. Now, there was a history of some sort of trauma about 10 years prior. And the patient best corrected vision in this eye it was only about 20 out of 40, and there's a lot of glare-related issues due to the cataract. So it didn't make sense for us to do LASIK on this eye. What makes more sense is to actually take out the cataract. And of course, we could treat the minus 4 myopia at the same sitting. So that's what we're doing for this patient. Now, in a young patient like this, you got to be very careful. This uh, lens capsule can be more elastic. So we're going to try and make our rexes maybe even along the smaller side, 5.0 is probably a good goal. And look how soft that lens is when we poke in. So getting that idea, what's our 5.0 millimeter rexes? And notice how when I tear the rexes, I almost have to keep bringing it in. It wants to run out because it is a little more elastic. So we'll be careful here. Get a very controlled 5 millimeter rexes done. Notice also on the main incision, the parasitesis, I definitely nicked the limbo vessels. I'm doing a surgery that I need to last for 70 more years. This patient needs to see through this surgery until this patient's 100 years old. So there's our rexus. Ooh, I'm happy with that one. 5.0 on the dot, beautifully centered and nice and round. So this is the key step is hydrodissection. Just get that whole nucleus out of the bag. It's soft, it's butter. So just hydrodissect, hydrodissect. There you can see the, the cortical opacities that became really opaque now. Get that nucleus up out of the capsule bag. There's no density here. You do not need a phaco probe even. You don't need any ultrasound energy. So I'm just going to go in directly with the IA probe. Why put the phaco probe in? You don't need it. Just the IA probe. And we can aspirate the entire lens just with this. And you can see there were a lot of lens opacities that as we did the hydrodissection, it really highlighted them and made it very obvious. And no wonder the patient's acuity was down in this eye. Now, given the history of some prior trauma, good news is we did not note any issues with zoner support. It looks like the patient has good zoner support 360. No looseness at all. I don't think we're going to need a capture tension ring. This looks fantastic. So the whole cataract is just soft. So it all aspirates down very easily just through the IA port. No, no issues at all. Let's clean up the capsule. This is going to take a little bit extra time now. So we're going to show you the complete cataract case unedited. It's going to take a little bit more time. Now the nucleus is gone, but the cortex cleanup, that's probably the more important part here. And so we'll do it little by little in all the quadrants. And you'll see we're going to have to do some polishing on that capture bag as well. And so we'll get all that stuff off the undersurface of the anterior capsule rim. What's the odds the patient's going to need a YAG laser capsulotomy for posterior capsule pacification in the next year? Well, it's pretty high, no matter how much polishing we do. Because remember, PCO is much more common the younger you are. In fact, if you operate on little tiny kids, babies, the PCO rate's 100, for sure 100% within the first year. Heck, 100% within the first few months. This is why in the, post, in the baby case, we do a posterior capsule rectus or even an anterior vitrectomy primarily intentionally on those, those congenital cataract cases, right? So on a patient who's 30, obviously that's not the same as pediatric, 30 is an adult, but still, the rate of PCO with a 30-year-old having cataract surgery is much higher than the rate of PCO in a 70- or 80-year-old having cataract surgery. So filling up our capsule bag here, we're going to put in a torque lens. You already see some torque marks on the cornea at about the width the rule or 90-degree meridian. So delivering the lens in here, here comes the lens going in the capsule bag. Nice and easy on that delivery. And we'll get this torque lens lined up for this patient. Now, question for you is, obviously, the patient's 30 years old and has accommodation. The other eye that had LASIK and now is Plano has plenty of accommodation because of age 30. So what do you choose as the refractive target in this eye? That's my question. Would you choose Plano or would you choose a little bit of myopia? And in this case, I'll tell you, we chose Plano. Plano, Plano, Plano. And the patient was thrilled. Remember, the patient's used to using the other eye, the left eye that didn't have trauma, to do most of all vision, right? Distance and near. And this patient spends a lot of time doing driving and distance-related activities, driving and outdoor sports. 
and really wants that plano outcome. And certainly to do any reading up close, like cell phone use or even a computer, glasses can be used, but even easier, just the other eye. The left eye is completely fa- uh, normal. It's phakic with great accommodation because of age 30. And so the patient had a beautiful result. So in this case, I say go for plano, even though it's a monofocal lens with no um, ability to accommodate. So sealing up the main incision, you can see the rexus looks great. That's about a five, maybe a little bit more than five millimeter rexus. Nicely centered, nice and round. Again, this is a high myop, so we brought the pupil back down a little bit by lifting up the iris. And so we'll do a little bit more washout here. And I, I really like that lens position. You can see the right side of your screen, the patient's inferior cornea. There's some marks there. That looks great. So we're going to just wash out the viscoelastic. Again, tent up that iris and seal up the incisions here. There's a little bit of viscoelastic. That'll wash out in a sec. And we can put in some triumcinolone as well. And we'll put that triumcinolone in to help quality inflammation. And again, you can see that's a really good rexus, holding that lens in a good position. This patient's going to be happy. Again, about a half milligram of preservative-free triumcinolone. Swirl that around in the anterior chamber. Just helps to have a nice, quiet eye and post-up day one. Now, one important issue. The patient had LASIK in the other eye a week or two ago. And so she knows what that experience is like. And the LASIK has a pretty quick recovery. I think it's a faster recovery than cataract, right? Because you're not doing anything intraocular. The LASIK recovery is very quick because it's just on the surface of the eye. It's the cornea. So you got to tell her it's going to be a little bit more involved recovery here. So you see there was a lot more viscoelastic in the eye. I'm glad we flushed that out. We may need to add more triamcinolone. And again, I'm showing you my, my unedited case here. So it's a little bit extra time to do these few extra steps. But it's important that I give this patient a great outcome here. So I explained to the patient that, yes, for this cataract eye, don't expect great vision until that pupil comes down. And it takes a little bit longer to heal up. And it may feel a little different than the LASIK did because this is more invasive. The LASIK's on the eye, right, on the surface of the cornea. And this is in the eye behind the blue iris, I told the patient. So, so now again, sealing up the incision. I'm glad we spent the extra time to get out that viscoelastic. That would have caused a pressure spike. Now let's put a little more triumphant on the eye. We'll get that inflammation under control. And we'll put a little bit of preservative-free moxifloxacin as well. Swirl that um, around a BSS. And now here comes the moxifloxacin. And then we can confirm that toric lens is beautifully lined up. And this patient absolutely did have a beautiful outcome. Uh, basically, spot on Plano in 2020. And she was very happy. So there's the IA-only cataract, the soft cataract. Sounds easy, but... Of course, it has its challenges too. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for watching these videos. Be sure to check out the website too, cataractcoach.com. You'll get the full text and the graphics and the photos plus the videos. And if you sign up for a free daily email, we'll send all of that to you in your inbox every day for free. Come on, cataractcoach.com. Check it out.